God has established governments over countries. But no government is perfectly good. Every government is made up of men who are sinners. And we see this in the story of the kings of Judah. Saul was a promising young man. He was humble, but he became proud. And he didn't do what God told him to do. So God took the kingdom from him after 40 years and gave it to David, a man after God's own heart. David was a true shepherd king, yet even he sinned and was disciplined by the Lord for it. He had it in his heart to build a temple, a house for God to dwell among the people. After 40 years of his reign, Solomon, his son, reigned also for 40 years. And he had a heart to have wisdom that he might rule God's people well. And he built the temple. And throughout his days, the people focused on God through the temple. But he also failed. God had said, do not multiply wealth. Do not multiply horses. Do not multiply wives. But his wives turned his heart away from the Lord. And he worshipped false gods. So when his son took over the throne, God split the kingdom through Rehoboam's pride, that the people could choose whether to walk with the God of Israel or the gods of the nations. All his reign he was harassed by his neighbour, King Jeroboam, but he kept the doors of the temple open. After 17 years, his son Abijah took the throne. Jeroboam attacked. Abijah went against Jeroboam in the name of the Lord declaring, The Lord has established the sons of David by a perpetual covenant of salt to be king. You cannot succeed if you fight against us. Jeroboam was severely defeated. But Abijah only reigned for three years. Abijah's son Asa took up the throne. Things were quiet for the first ten years of his reign, and so he strengthened the city. And he commanded Judah to seek the Lord, to follow the commandments of the Lord. But a huge army came against him, Zerah the Ethiopian, a million men and three hundred chariots. Asa relied upon the Lord. And so he prayed, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether by many or with those who have no power. Help us, O Lord our God. For we rest on you, and in your name we go against this multitude. O Lord, you are our God. Do not let man prevail against you. The Lord struck the Ethiopians, and Asa had a great victory, and plundered the cities of Gerar as a result. Then one of the prophets encouraged Asa to seek the Lord. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. It was a warning not to trust in his own strength now that the Lord had delivered him. For Israel had been without the true God and a priest and without the law, and they were in trouble. But you be strong and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Asa heeded the words of this prophecy. He gathered the people together of Judah and Benjamin, the people came together in great numbers when they saw that the Lord his God was with him. And all Judah rejoiced, for they had sworn in their heart and all their soul to walk with the Lord. He was found by them, and the Lord gave them rest all around. Asa even deposed his mother from being queen mother, because she had made an obscene image of Asherah, the god of the Canaanites. Asa cut down this obscene image, then crushed and burned it by the brook Kidron. The heart of Asa was loyal all his days. He also brought into the house of God the things that his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated, silver and gold and utensils. And there was no war until the 35th year of the reign of Asa. Asa didn't keep all his great wealth to himself. He dedicated some of it to the service of God, and the Lord gave him peace.
But in the 36th year of the reign of Asa, Baasha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and of the king's house, and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus, saying, Let there be a treaty between you and me, as there was between my father and your father. See, I have sent you silver and gold. Come, break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. So Ben-Hadad heeded king Asa, and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. They attacked Ijon, Dan, abel Maim, and all the store cities of Natali. Now it happened when Baasha heard it, that he stopped building Ramah and ceased his work. Then King Asa took all Judah, and they carried away the stones and timber of Ramah, which Baasha had used for building, and with them he built Geba and Mizpah. At that time, Hanani the seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you have relied on the king of Syria, and have not relied on the Lord your God, therefore the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Were the Ethiopians and the Lubin not a huge army with many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore from now on you shall have wars. Then Asa was angry with the seer and put him in prison. For he was enraged at him because of this. And Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. Note that the acts of Asa, first and last, are indeed written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. And in the thirty-ninth year of his reign, Asa became diseased in his feet, and his malady was severe. Yet in his disease he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. So Asa rested with his father. He died in the forty-first year of his reign, and they buried him in his own tomb, which he had made for himself in the city of David. And they laid him in the bed, which was filled with spices and various ingredients prepared in a mixture of ointments. They made a very great burning for him. My name's Arthur, and I thank you for joining me as we've shared from Second Chronicles chapters 14 to 16, but particularly chapter 16, the life of Asa. He began well, and the Lord blessed him and gave him peace. But he didn't continue to trust in the Lord. As life went on and things went normally, he began to trust in the things of this world. So when Baasha, king of Israel, came against him, having recovered from the previous defeat by Ahijah, Instead of pleading with the Lord and seeking wisdom from the Lord as to how to deal with this trouble, he went to the king of Syria. No doubt he had forgotten the Syrians were long-time enemies. They'd caused a lot of trouble to King David. They didn't seem now that they would be trouble. But because he got involved with them, they would be trouble for him again. So we always need to seek the Lord and rely upon the Lord. And then there was a second matter. Asa, his feet became diseased so that he couldn't walk, but he didn't seek the Lord. He just consulted the doctors. Now, of course, we don't object to people consulting doctors, but we must always seek the Lord. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the testimony that came in chapter 15. If you seek the Lord, he will be found by you, is as true today as ever. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him.